To present the report on the economic policy framework, please welcome the Coordinating Minister for the Economy and Minister of Finance, Dr. Ngozi Okonjo-Wela. Your Excellency, Mr. President, I'm told that I have very little time, so I, may I beg uh, to stand on all existing protocol. I begin by saying that I have two burdens. The first one is that the First Lady said that the transformation agenda rests on the shoulders of Nigerian women. I want to report that Nigerian women are doing well they are working hard, so give them a round of applause. But behind every successful Nigerian woman, there's a hard-working Nigerian man. So give them a round of applause. My second burden is that my colleague, Dr. Shamshuddin Usman, spent quite some time talking about people not believing in economic figures. So it's my job to try and run you through quickly to uh, make you believe that the work that Mr. President and the reform team is doing uh, really is there and the economic figures show it. So let me begin quickly to summarize the policies and strategies and the results that we've gotten from the economic reform agenda. The first slide. <clears throat> I just want to spend one minute talking about where we are coming from. Because to talk about what we've achieved, we need to remind ourselves of the problems that we are struggling with. So our first slide just shows you some of the problems in the economy. They've been there for some time. They are still there, and that's what we are working on. Insufficient jobs and poverty, dependency on one uh, export oil, high food importation, a housing deficit, poor infrastructure, high inflation, falling reserves, rising domestic debt, high recurrent expenditure. These are the things that Nigerians worry about that we have to take care of and what the transformation agenda is trying to address. So the first thing I want to say is really to focus on the next slide, which is on the economy. And the central message that we want to give out of the work we're doing is that the economy is strong. The next slide, please. The economy is strong. I think all of you would have uh, observed that the exchange rates, everybody knows about the exchange, exchange rate of the Naira to the dollar and other currencies, has been stable for these two years. That's the midterm report. Between 155 and 160 Naira, everybody knows that and they can attest. Inflation is coming down from about 12.4% in May of 2011. It's now 9%. Our reserves are rising. In May, they were Reserves were at 32 billion. Today, we almost have 50 billion naira in reserve, 50 million billion dollars in reserves, and that is why the exchange rate has remained stable. And our economy is growing. We are one of the fastest growing economies in the world at 6.5 percent now. You need the economy to grow. You need this stability in order for us to solve the big problem we have, which is creating jobs. So we should be. Uh, not minimize the importance of this stability of the economy. So that's the first point that uh, I want to make. And all these numbers are there, they can be verified. The second issue is to say that Nigerians are worried about the cost of government. And with the support of Mr. President and the team, we are working on reducing the cost of government. Recurrent expenditure is coming down. It was 74%. When we, in 2011, we are now down to 68% in the 2013 budget. And we are taking it down even further. We are using our budgeting system to try and address the 6,000 uncompleted and unfinished projects we have. Our focus in this administration is to try to complete those projects so that Nigerians can see the dividends. I know people are worried about our debt. I want to say unequivocally that this government is concerned to keep the debt level at reasonable levels. It's concerned about debt. Nobody wants to see the debt rising in this country. So what are we doing about it? What's the policy? We are bringing the borrowing, uh, uh, annual borrowing in the country down from about 8, 852 billion naira we borrowed in 2011. 
We have brought it down to 588 billion in 2013 and we'll bring it down even further. There is more. We have not only done that, we have started retiring the debt that we borrowed before. This year, we have paid 75 billion dollars off, 75 billion naira off of our stock of debt. So instead of just rolling it over, our policy is now to be paying it off, and we've started. We will put 25 billion naira in a sinking fund each year to try and address this problem with the support of the National Assembly. Our objective is to keep our debt at very manageable levels, especially domestic borrowing by both the federal government and the states. This is what we have embarked on. We have also looked at our waiver and tariff policies. This is a, another area that Nigerians comment on. We've decided that the policy is to shift to sectoral waivers. So if we want to help one sector, it's not to give a waiver to an individual, no. We'll give it to the entire sector. So agriculture, power, the aviation, solid minerals can now import equipment at zero duty. And that is a new policy. I want to tell you that trade has improved. A mark of whether the economy is diversifying or not is what is happening with trade. And we now see that oil exports are now only 70% of the trade, and non-oil exports are 30%. That means that the balance of the economy, you saw that man balancing in the picture. The balance of our economy is shifting to non-oil. We are making more things here that we are consuming from vegetable oil to textiles to plastics, they are being made here, and we are even exporting to other countries. I'll say more on that later. We have tried to clean up as much in government as we can of the leakages. The mention was made of the petroleum subsidy scheme and the problems. What we've done, we hired 50 forensic auditors with the support of the president who reviewed the whole thing to find the leakages based on previous work done by the National Assembly. And we, we have found out of 232 billion naira that was identified as fraudulent, we have recovered 14 billion. We've tightened the audit processes and there's now more sanity in the process. Instead of 143 uh, um, oil marketers importing, they are down to 32 now and they are more easily monitored. The pension scheme, under the Pension Act, you know, we can create, a, we have created a new department called the Pension Transition Department to manage all the old uh, pension schemes where we have had these problems of fraud. So now we are going to unify the civil service, the police, immigration, customs, all the pension schemes, except for the military, will come under one roof. That will do one thing, enable us to monitor and tighten the management and better serve our pensioners because we cannot have a situation in which people have worked and then they are not able to benefit. This is one thing that the president has strongly supported. Somebody talked about the need for institutions and systems. This government, one by one, is trying to put in place systems that will endure forever to manage our finances, to manage our government, to manage our economy. One thing we are doing, in the, just as an illustration in the Ministry of Finance, we have three electronic platforms that we are building now that will endure. One is the integrated personnel and payroll management system. That one that will enable us to pay all our civil servants directly without sending money in bulk anywhere. And that will help us stem leakages there. We are also introducing a system whereby all government departments can be connected to the Ministry of Finance. We are building it now so that we can transfer money electronically. And the last one is a system that will give us an overview of all the money of the government, both that one within the central bank as well as in commercial banks, and enable us to know our cash position at any one time. That will also help us to stem the leakages and corruption and disappearance of money. All this is being done um, you know, to strengthen the economy and give it the basis to grow. And the certification from outside, from rating agencies, like the international agencies, Fitch, Standard and Poor's, you've heard of them, that rate all countries. It's positive. Nigeria is one of the few countries that has been upgraded as having a stable economy when others are being downgraded, including some developed countries. And I think that this is something that this administration has managed to accomplish. Nigeria has become the highest destination for investment. This is not something that is being invented. You can check the figures put together by the United Nations. 7.5 billion 
dollars of investment coming in because even as we look, investors are voting with their feet and bringing money in here to create jobs. Now, we have also been working on the financial sector. We strengthen the banks. The job we have now is to see that they can lend to individuals and the real sector at affordable interest rates. That's what we are looking at now. But that our banks are strong, our stock market is strong. Many Nigerians have shares and you, the stock market has been down. But what we've done is the president has given us permission, elimination of VAT, stamp duties, and other things that stand in the way of the stock market, and registration of more companies. Now the stock market in there is performing. The index has risen by 71% since May 2012. 71. That means that all Nigerians investing that the value of their shares and stock is higher. We have also strengthened the insurance policies to allow Nigerians, when you have an accident, to be able to get paid, for you to buy insurance at reasonable level. And now we see that number of policyholders has increased from 700,000 in 2010 to 1.5 million in 2012. Claims, in payment of claims, has increased from 37 billion to 52 billion naira in 2012. I want to just spend one moment on a, a, a program that all Nigerians are interested in. This is the SHOPI, the Subsidy Reinvestment Program. Just for a bit of accounting, we want, we've been publishing every single month how much we get for this Subsidy Reinvestment Program. And under the direction of uh, Dr. Kolade and the team, work has been ongoing. We got 180 billion for federal government, in, in 2012, the states got 154 billion, the local council 76.4 billion. The federal government share was put to very specific use. First, social safety net. What we call social safety net is trying to help those at the bottom end of the ladder, those who are poor. How was this applied? First, we targeted maternal mortality and infant mortality. That is, it's not acceptable, Mr. President said, that our mother should be dying in childbirth. Nigeria has one of the highest rates of maternal death in the world, and one of the highest rates of infant death. Nobody wants to sit and see their child die. So we have tried to target a program of training midwives and health workers. Over 9,000 of them have been trained. We have coupled it with cash transfers. When women come for prenatal care, we give them a cash, a cash transfer. If they have a birth attended by one of these health workers or midwives, they also get a cash transfer. They bring their child for immunization, they get a cash transfer. This is real. We have the names of all the participants in this program, word by word. Anyone who wants to see it, we've got, we've got it. So you can check whether this is really happening. This is something, part of a program that the president launched called Saving One Million Lives. The objective is that by 2015, we would have saved one million lives of women and children who would have died because they don't have adequate health care. We are also doing work on infrastructure. This Shopee money has been directed. So you see the roads and bridges. The Abuja uh, local Jar Road, Kano Medugri, work is still ongoing, but money has been directed to improve these roads. The Oweto Bridge, also is benefiting Niger Delta, the augmentation of East-West Highway, and our transport, our rail, I'll come back to that, is also benefiting. So we have very specific projects to which this money is going, and all of them can be counter-checked. Now, you know, already mention has been made of some of the achievements in infrastructure, but I'll just, you got a teaser. So just quickly, on rail, it's not just the uh, Kano, lagos Kano line, that is on, but the Eastern Line Port Harcourt Medugri will be completed by the end of 2013. The Abuja Kaduna Standard Gauge Line is 60% complete, and the Itape Ajokuta Wari Standard Gauge Line is 77% complete. So by the end of this year, beginning of next year, we're going to see more rail lines on. And you know, do you know that the passenger numbers have increased from about 1 million 2009? We have 4.2 million today, and the demand is so high that we are buying more locomotives. 25 new locomotives have been purchased from GE. We have refurbished over 200 coaches and wagons to serve the Nigerian public. 
On transport, let's not forget we have a lot of waterways in this country. And this government has been working hard dredging parts of these waterways. The lower river Niger has been dredged from Barrow in Niger State to Wari in Delta State. 72 kilometers of dredging. That has made it possible to have all year round navigation. The Onicha port has been completed and commissioned. Barrow port is under construction. Uguta port will soon start. And people do not know, but the volume of cargo in the, going on the inland waterways has now increased, doubled, from 2.9 metric tons to over 4 million metric tons in 2012. And the number of passengers using these waterways has gone from 250,000 last year to 1.3 million in 20. Uh, uh, 250,000 in 2011 to 1.3 million last year. So these are real numbers of what is happening, the difference that is being made. Let me just take aviation because a lot is happening in this area. 22 airports are being refurbished all at the same time and remodeled. We are building six perishable cargo airports. That is, we are linking the agenda in agriculture where we want to to grow our own food, transport it across the country, and even export by building these six cargo perishable good airports in Yola, in Lagos, in Loring, Joss, Makodi, and Jalingo. That's where the six uh, terminals will be. You know, we are building five new international terminals. The Enugu one was, uh, uh, Mr. President broke ground the other day, but Port Harcourt, Lagos, Kano, and Abuja, they are all going to come on stream. This is part of the master plan for the aviation sector. But above all, Nigerians are concerned about safety in aviation. The ministry has upgraded all the safety uh, equipment and all the navigational equipment and aids have been put in place to better assure safety, including weather reporting, so that when the weather is bad, the pilots will know. We are very concerned about this issue of safety. Finally, in aviation, the idea is that when you build these new terminals, you couple them with an airport city called Aerotropolis. There you can have shops, businesses, conferences, hotels, all in one cluster, as you have in other countries. And that is part of creating jobs, because this kind of activity will also create many more jobs. That in roads, we have paved 651 kilometers of roads with bitumen in 2012. I can just name them. There's, there are quite a few. Apapo Shodi, Bini Ore, Shagamo, Abuja, Abajiloko, Jadualization, Kano Medugri, Onichowe Expressway, Enugu Portakot has been repaired. I can go on and on. Katsina Daura, Kat <laughs> Gombe Numan, Oweto Bridge. These are all the things that are being done. The second Niger Bridge, the, in public-private partnership, the design has been advertised and awarded, and it is going, ongoing as we speak. And God willing, ground will still be broken on that one. Ports. We have worked in our ports because we know this is part of our competitiveness. We've reduced the number of agencies. It's a very difficult area to work in, but we have been pushing. We've reduced the number of agencies from 14 to 7, disbanded some task forces that were harassing people with cargo, and we are trying to go to a 48-hour clearance time. But right now, for trouble-free cargo, we are down to seven days. So we are not there yet. But we are moving in the right direction, and we hope to continue working to do that. On power, now we know that this past week has been a very difficult one. The power situation has not been that great. But the reason is that we have withdrawn about 800 megawatts of, of the grid for repair and maintenance reasons. So once this work is completed, the power will be put back. And all that cannot gainsay what was mentioned earlier, that there have been tangible improvements in the power sector. In 10 of our major cities, we have monitored this. The power has increased from about nine hours a day to about 15 hours now, and we will continue to monitor and increase this to make the power sector reforms work. We meet almost every week Mr. with Mr. President to monitor these issues. This privatization that is ongoing now, that has been done in a very uh, transparent and internationally accepted way, will enable us to move forward in a much more considered fashion to improve the power sector. Not only is the privatization ongoing, but we've also liberalized the sector. So 34 independent power producers have now gotten licenses. Three of them have actually commenced work. So with all of this, you know, as we move along with the privatization and the liberalization of this sector, we expect to see the improvements that have already been made to continue. In water, 
We have completed seven water projects across the nation. 65% of the population now have access to improved water sources. And we've wheeled so many dams that are being made operational as we speak, both for agricultural purposes, but also for hydropower, so irrigation and hydropower. The nine dams completed in Akwaibom, Katsina, Enugu, and on those states have a capacity to add to the grid 11.2 million megawatts, and 125,000 jobs have been created. I'm mentioning the names so that those who want to check can actually check that these things are real and are being done. In agriculture, much has been said already, so I won't spend too much time, but just mention two things. There has been focus on rice. The idea that Nigeria will be the largest importer of rice in the world is not acceptable when we can grow our own rice. So in the area of agriculture, there has been focus, and I'm happy to report that there has been dry season production this time in 10 northern states, Kebi, Zamfara, Sokoto, Katsina, Kano, Jigawa, Gombe, Niger, Kogi, and Bauchi, resulting in an output of about 1.07 million, 1 uh, million metric tons by 268,000 uh, farmers, and we need to make sure that this rice is purchased, as the farmer said, with a, a basic price that incentivizes the farmers and that we are able to mill and then uh, consume this within this economy. 13 new rice mills have sprung up to service some of what we are seeing all over the country. The other crop I want to mention is cassava, because what's happening there, we are the largest producers of cassava in the world, but we don't really transform it in a way that can help create jobs and products. Now that is happening, very big companies like Cargill of the US are coming in to produce starch, sorbitol, and other products here. They're investing here to use this cassava, and this is very important for us. We are also preparing exports to China, but really the one interesting for us is when the people come to invest here uh, to, to, to be able to uh, produce and keep jo jobs within our own uh, economy. So I won't go into more detail uh, in, in that. Let me just move quickly to manufacturing. Now, this is very exciting. We have to industrialize this economy, and we cannot do it unless we find the policies and programs to encourage our manufacturers. Not that government is going to manufacture, no. It is our private sector, and we're very proud that we have Nigerians with the capability to do this. You saw Profos uh, company there that was shown on, on, on the short video. We have the Dangotes, the Innocents, the Chikatsons, the Betos, and I could go on and on. We have our own indigenous manufacturers who are working hard, but also, as I said, people are coming in from outside. Now, the investments that have come in, just to mention a few, for you to know this is not literature. Indorama has, is building a $1.2 billion fertilizer plant in Oni for the petrochemicals complex. Procter & Gamble is building a $250 million consumer goods plant in Ogun State. SAB Miller has built a $100 million brewery in Atonich and is looking to expand. And we could list them. So we want to focus on specific things that Nigerians can count on see, not what we are going to do. So that is uh, on manufacturing. And we are going to push for areas where we have a competitive advantage. It's interesting, in the 70s, those who would remember the story of ships, many, many ships lined up. I was a teenager then trying to bring cement to Nigeria. Today, Nigeria is a net exporter of cement. We produce now 28 million metric tons of cement, and our demand is 20 million metric tons. So we have an extra 2 million to export, and more is on the way. And that's the way we are going in many of our industries. Let me just touch quickly on housing. This is an area where Nigerians feel, look, it's normal that in the course of one's life, you should be able to put a roof over your head. And yet today, our young people don't have the hope of that. So Mr. President has said, create a system whereby we can give these young people hope. What is being done there? With the Ministry of Housing, we are working on a mortgage refinance institution that can make it easier for young Nigerians to get mortgages at affordable rates. We are doing this with the help of the World Bank that has given us a $300 million facility at zero interest. 40 years repayment, 10 years of grace. With these kinds of terms, it has given us the courage that to be able to build this institution with affordable rates so our young people can get. So we are targeting 200,000 affordable mortgages within five years for our young people and our, our, our older people, those who still don't have housing. 
And um, we are also building social housing. The ministry has done about 61,800 units across all the six geopolitical zones. But we are not resting there. We are working with different companies with different models to produce more ma mass housing that we can either rent or sell to our people in our working class so that they know that their labor is not for nothing. In the area of communications technology, it was said that the president, for the first time, created a ministry of communications technology. Why is this important? This is where our young people are at now. This is where they are going. This is where the knowledge for the future is. And if Nigeria does not get on that road, we will miss out. So this ministry is doing so much. I want to tell you that with what the work they are doing with the companies, and yes, we know that quality is a problem. We all have dropped calls. We know we have to work on this. But we cannot get away from the fact that 8.5% of Nigerians had mobile phones in 2004. Do you know what the number is now? 93%. This is a huge, huge accomplishment. 38% of Nigerians have access to the internet now. And what is happening is that more jobs are being created in this area. There are two, two in, uh, online shopping shoppers, conga.com and jumai.com, who are reporting that 100,000 Nigerians per day visit their online shopping site. So something is changing. And with the help of this ministry and all the work it's doing, uh, we are trying to move with our youth into the communications age. On health, I already talked about the focus. The focus, the focus we have is on those the poor people do not have access to health care. And this initiative of saving one million lives is a vehicle which Mr. President is using to try and work on not only on maternal and child care, but also on malaria, on polio, on all the other diseases, on immunizing our children. This is very, very important. That focus is coupled with a focus at the upper end. Too many Nigerians have to travel out for medical care. And we are losing too much money abroad. So what the president has directed is that we work with the private sector to create hospitals across the country that Nigerians can go to. As we speak, the Ministry of Health is working on six of these hospitals with the private sector to try and give the kind of care that Nigerians travel abroad to, speak, to seek. On education, and I'm com winding, uh, coming to, uh, to, to the end, on education, our focus is on our out-of-school children. It is unacceptable that 10.6 million Nigerian children are not in school. That must be something that has to be corrected. And how are we doing this? The Amajiri uh, schools are very critical. 124 of them have been built to try and accommodate these children. And we are encouraging private sector people to also build. 13 schools, especially for girls within this system, has also been built. So at the lower end of the scale of basic education, we're really working to try and solve this problem. At the upper end, we're looking at our tertiary education, trying to see how we can better refurbish our tertiary institutions. But the president has instituted one thing. For those of our brilliant children who get first class, they have a presidential scholarship automatically to go and study in any great university of their choice. And 101 of these scholarships have already been awarded. We will not leave out sports because Nigerians love sports. And this is also another sector which is very uh, good at job creation. So in sports, what has happened? Our Paralympians did us proud, but we didn't do as well with the regular Olympics. So Mr. President called a retreat. Everybody sat down, all the stakeholders. How are we going? What will be the policy? The policy is to show our athletes that we have pride in them, to solve the problem of governance and corruption in that sector, to put finance behind them, and to try to help them to excel. And with that kind of focus, some results are already in. We all know the Super Eagles won the 2013 Africa Cup after 19 years of drought. We know that the Golden Eagles finished second at the Under-17 Championships. The Flying Eagles finished third at the Under-20 Championships in Algeria. And Nigeria placed first at the 2012 Senior African Athletics Championship in Porto Novo. And we emerged the overall total medal winner uh, for the whole games. So results are coming in and we will not relent. Even in the creative industries, we have not stopped. We are proud of our Nollywood. Why? It is a job creator. It has created 200,000 direct jobs and a million indirect jobs, 37 billion naira of value. What are we doing? We don't want to get in their way and spoil what they are doing because they are doing it as private sector. 
but we want to work with them on policies, and that's what we are doing. They said to us, help us protect our intellectual property so that when we make a movie, people don't uh, re replicate it and we don't get revenues. That's what we are focusing on now. And fiscal measures such as tax duties and waivers for that industry. The three billion Naira grant is being that the president has approved, is being used to try and help them improve distribution, intellectual property issues, so that that industry can get additional investment. Now, all of this is happening in all the sectors. But the government has not stood still, just waiting for the sectors. It has created, and this is my last point, three programs itself, directly. Now, we don't want to say that the, the government should be the one creating more jobs, but Mr. President does not want to stand still. So three programs to address three sets of our youth. The first is young entrepreneurs, those that are creating businesses. These are very exciting people because they are saying, I will create a business not just to employ myself, but to employ others. The You Win program that everybody has seen, a program that you can win on merit, and this is a biggest factor in this. You don't have to know anybody. Your father, mother, aunt does not have to know anybody. Just get on the website. With a fair and open competition, 1,200 people won in the first round, and they got grants of 1 to 10 million naira. Guess what? We just finished a survey two weeks ago. They have created 15,000 jobs already, and our target is to get from 8 to 80,000 to 110,000. We did a round for women, and we have also completed that, and we'll soon be launching and giving them their grants. Every single geopolitical zone in this country has benefited. Just give me a chance to say, not central, 2,117 jobs have been created of the 15,000 I mentioned. Northeast, 2,367 by these entrepreneurs. Northwest, 1,703. Southeast, 1,579. South-South, 1,765. Southwest, 2,577. And they are in agriculture, media, ICT, manufacturing, retail, across the board. That's just the program for entrepreneurs. Now, there's the community services scheme, which is designed to address people with secondary school and below, the unskilled. The target there is using Shopee money to create 370,000 jobs. 178,000 have been created as we speak. The last sprung of it is the graduate internship program. Our young unemployed graduates, we need to make sure that they do not despair. So this program is to attract 50,000 graduates into jobs with private sector. This is going well. When we launched it, 1,000 private firms have applied and over 50,000 youths. So far, we have managed to place 1,306 graduates in different companies, and we will go on. Once we reach the 50,000, we will do another 50,000. This is just to give you an idea of concrete achievements, not things that we are going to do, but things that are concrete. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, making Nigeria work for the better is the job of all of us. And I want to just say something in, in Igbo which I think is one of my favorite proverbs, which is that What does it mean? When the right hand washes the left hand, the left hand washes the right hand, both are clean. In Nigeria, we all need to wash hands together. Thank you very much.